nonprofit Spotlight, which is dedicated today to women care of Santa Cruz County. I'm here with Cory Troiani oh. and Sharon Saldavia. Nice and um, why don't we start, Cory, with talking about the mission of women care? Okay. Well, the mission of women care is to provide advocacy and support um, for women going through any kind of cancer, mm -hmm. in any stage of their cancer. Um, we do this through education, through um, emotional support groups and free services, and uh, we have a library. So we provide all of this for free, and we provide it to women in all walks of life, uh, any I, I feel that we're a very diverse organization in that respect. Yeah, so it's mostly about free resources and emotional support. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And so to get a, an, a different perspective, just, you know, we can talk about this, but to get a, a more of a perspective, we uh, went to Women Care and we um, did a little video clip. So why don't we take a look at this clip right now? Okay. My name is Laverne and I am Assistant Program Director at Women Care and my responsibilities are for client and volunteer services. I have the immense privilege or honor of working with an amazing group of people. Um, I feel honored anytime a woman walks through the door and invites Women Care to be a part of her support group and I get to work with these women and, and be as creative as possible in providing as many services as one might need. Um, I also work with wonderful volunteers and other staff members. And some of the services that we provide to women as they walk this cancer journey is a peer support program called Sisters Offering Support. And even though friends and family offer a lot of support, I hear again and again that there's nothing quite like talking to another woman who's walked a similar path. And you know, they, they share an experience and a vulnerability that most of us don't. It's the same thing that women say in the support groups and then the added benefit of having a one-on-one -on -one peer support seems to be you know, a great asset to women. We I'm Shirley Marcus. I volunteer at Women Care as a co-facilitator of um, the Arm in Arm group which is advanced recurrent or metastatic cancer. I'm Sally Jones and I'm a co-facilitator for the arm and arm group. Hi, my name's Christy. Uh, my name is Eileen Bashford. Hi, my name is Ann Taku. I'm Carol Lacey. The women in the group are a sisterhood the second you walk in the door. It's indescribable how profound it is and how positive, even when people are in the most pain of their lives. It's a safe place, it's a sacred place, and everyone is able to share what's real, what's in their heart, what's in their mind. It's a fantastic group, it's a wonderful group, it's, it's a group of reality, this is what's going on in my life, this is what I don't like, this is what I like, this is what I'm angry about, this is what I'm grateful for. We have a group of sisters with unconditional love and caring and hope and we share our tears, our laughter, our joy, our fears and it's a safe place. Those walls don't talk, they don't, they don't relay the information to anybody else and it's just a wonderful support that Women Care has provided for survivors of cancer and people going through cancer. What I get from the group is um, I can step out of my journey, out of my cancer, and listen to my sisters, and listen to um, their perspective of what's happening in their life, and I can come away with a different understanding of my way I'm facing something, and with, you know, a, a better strength, a bigger strength. You are just heard with unconditional love. When I come to our meetings on Monday, it's like coming home to my sisters. And that is just so powerful. I also drive. I'm also a, a, not only a client, but a volunteer 
for the um, women who need rides to their appointments. And I find it amazing, one, that the women trusts me. As soon as I open the door for them, they get in my front seat. And um, so they trust me to get them there and be on time. And then two, it's like I sprinkle pixie dust over their chair. I've, I use this analogy a lot because the minute I close their door, they just outpour their whatever they're going through. And I'm a sounding board. I listen. I have two ears. Talk them off. They'll grow back. But it just gives me so much, and I learned so much from them. You, you meet the woman, and you're taking her to an appointment or a surgery or a a therapy, chemo, whatever it is she needs. And your goal is twofold. One is to get her to her appointment, and the other one is to be present for her. It's not about you, you've got cancer, oh, so do I. No, you're like there for her. You support her, you do active listening, and you just really try to reflect back what does she need. And, and I guess that's really some of the same school skills I learned in the arm and arm group. I think arm and arm has made me a better volunteer. I'm thankful that Women Care allows us to have a space and it provides such a warm and loving place for us to be. This was in particularly about the women in uh, the arm and arm group. And so, uh, any response to this? I that it's my support group. <laughs> That's yes. my support group. Those are my my uh, cancer sisters. Um, uh -huh. You know, I've been with them for a couple of years. I've been a client at Women Care for 18 years. I think uh -huh. I set some kind of record. Uh, I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer 18 years ago, and so I've survived all these years and regularly attended support groups at Women Care. And I think that it's a lot of what has kept me going mm -hmm. and given me such a good outcome with a really uh, dire prognosis that I had. Mm. So, you know, I think the clip shows the warmth that we have between us, mm -hmm. um, the confidentiality and privacy that's recognized in the group and one other thing I'd like to say is that from attending all these groups at Women Care, I've really learned that um, to never judge the choice that another woman makes. Mm -hmm. So someone in my support group might make a choice about treatment or not having treatment. It might not be my choice, but I'm there to support her in the choices that she makes. And we all find it very effortless to, mm -hmm. to do that for yeah. each other. And I understand there's a lot of laughter, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Laverne tells us that we arm-in-arm arm arm means advanced, recurrent, or metastatic cancer. Right. So, you know, we're people that have gotten kind of the worst news that you can get that our cancer has spread to another organ in our body. Uh, but Laverne tells us that she hears the most roaring laughter out of mm -hmm. our group than any other group, and I don't know why that is, but... Sometimes, you know, when you're facing something mm -hmm. really serious and really dark, yeah. you go to funny it. things come up, mm -hmm. too. <laughs> right. And, you know, um, I approach this group from a different perspective. I'm a volunteer who um, facilitates one of the arm-in-arm -arm groups. And this past year, we needed a second group for, for this group of women. And um, it is such a privilege to be able to meet with them week after week. and witness them just going so deep with mm -hmm. any subject, um, the trust that they have in us to share their stories and receive support from our organization and from each other is just profound. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, so how did Women Care get started? I'll go ahead and speak to that. Women okay. Care started in 1992. There was a small group of women, um, cancer patients and mental health professionals and uh, the patient's friends and family uh, were, were seeking some kind of psychosocial support for women who have cancer. And at that time, the only thing available was at Stanford. 
So these uh, visionary women decided to start women care, and it started with a cardboard box in someone's garage, and <laughs> it has grown now for, what, 23 years. Mm -hmm. um, we've had various offices. Now we're located in SoCal. A few years ago, in 2013, we became a program of Family Service Agency of Santa Cruz County. Uh -huh. So um, that was a decision that helped us financially to go under the umbrella of a larger mm -hmm. organization, although we do still do our own fundraising. Uh, last year, Women Care served 230 clients, so that's about the size of the organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, people keep coming, uh -huh. our doors keep mm -hmm. being open. And how, how do people become clients? Oh, well, they call or they come in to the office and they hear about us through friends, family, their, their medical office is frequently a referral source, or mm -hmm. sometimes a spot in the newspaper where we have announcements about our groups. Mm -hmm. And so we will ha whoever's on the front desk, and that's another role that I have is, is um, being a front desk person, and we'll either have a phone or an in-person conversation with them about what their needs are and find out what they're hoping to receive from women care and and that's all for free and it's all free and I really want to underline what you said a little bit earlier Sharon about the fact that we don't have any agenda hmm. ourselves about how our clients might want to proceed with their cancer some of them uh, want to treat it very aggressively some want to get a lot more information and some will occasionally choose not to treat, but they still want the social and emotional support or the use of some of our other free services that right. we'll talk about. So now um, the arm and arm group is one mm -hmm. support group, and I know mm -hmm. there's, there's mm -hmm. two of those on Mondays and Thursdays, but mm -hmm. uh, what other kind of support groups does Women Care have? Well, Women Care has had the Tuesday night group since its inception, so for all these years there's a regular Tuesday night group. There is a group um, called the post-treatment group, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I've been in a post-treatment group. Uh, those groups um, help women who have completed their actual treatment for cancer. And w one thing that I think a lot of people don't know is when you're in the middle of treatment, you're doing something, you're taking action, um, it's very difficult, but there's an end in sight. But I personally found, and I think other women have found, that when treatment's over, then you're faced with the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Now what do I do after I've had this horrible disease? So Women Care offers post-treatment support groups. Mm -hmm. We have... Um, oh, we have our Spanish-speaking groups. Yeah, there are two separate Spanish-speaking groups, one in Watsonville called Entre Nosotras and one at our office in SoCal. Mm -hmm. And we have support groups for friends and family. Mm -hmm. And that's the group that meets on Tuesday evenings, every mm -hmm. other two Tuesday evenings a month. Mm -hmm. And then our Tuesday um, ongoing support group is for newly diagnosed women. Mm -hmm. And they may, they may get a late start to the group because they're so involved with their treatment. Um, but once they start coming to the Tuesday support group, they can stay with that group for many months past their treatment end date. And then at that point, they might be moving on to the um, post-treatment. Post yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, I, we heard in the uh, in the video, uh, Anne Taku talk and, mm -hmm. and Eileen uh, talk about uh, driving. Uh, what's that oh, about? We have so many volunteers, and actually, I think we have three paid staff, and everybody else that runs this organization is a volunteer, mm -hmm. and we have well over a dozen volunteer drivers who take their um, our clients to their medical appointments uh, and more and more we're getting some of our uh, long-term women care clients who also want to drive it's very sweet mm -hmm. it is. and um, in addition to the driving we also offer and this is all free mm -hmm. uh, we also offer meals and sometimes we refer clients to um, 
the Teen Kitchen Project, which is another nonprofit, and sometimes we have our own volunteers who will take a meal over once a week or so. Sometimes do light cleaning. That's mostly for women who've just come home from surgery and frequently women who live alone um, don't have anyone else in the house to help out. And there are miscellaneous things that our volunteer drivers do too. Um, last, a few months ago, a woman was moving from one part of the county to the other and she had movers, but they wouldn't take certain things. So we got a volunteer with a pickup who actually went over and took the potted plants and the strangely shaped mirror and such. And um, every now and then there's just an oddball thing that a client needs and we usually can find someone who can do that for them. Perfect. So it's really a satisfying uh, part of what we offer. Right. And I understand there's also uh, healing circles. And so um, I actually had the opportunity to visit um, Art for Healing mm -hmm. and I took a little clip and why don't we look at that first okay. and then we'll talk more about the healing circles. So why don't we take a look right now at the clip of the Art for Healing. Okay. Art for Healing is about process art where instead of focusing on the end result, people get a chance to listen deep within and paint, draw, glitter, glue, make a mess. Um, but whatever they need to do that expresses whatever's going on inside each person. Great. So, Art for Healing with Wendy Traber. Mm -hmm. She's been ever... with us from the inception. Yes. Yeah. From the, from the inception mm -hmm. since 1992? She's, she was one of our founding women, I believe. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's one of the healing circles. Yeah. Would either one of you tell a little bit more about the healing circles? Yeah, there are several of them. Um, for a long time, we've offered the Complementary Treatment Forum which is a once a month meeting um, that talks about lots of different complementary treatment options for women. So that includes nutrition, um, education about new therapies, just acupuncture. Lots. Yeah, yeah. So there are the complementary treatment forum, there's a writing circle, mm -hmm. uh, and there is a Qigong class for women mm -hmm. with cancer. There's a mindfulness meditation group that meets once a month as a healing circle at the Land of Medicine mm -hmm. Buddha. There's a couple of new ones that are really interesting, laughter yoga. Laughter mm -hmm. yoga? Laughter, laughter yoga. yoga. That sounds interesting. And one of my friends in my support group says that that has helped her more than anything. <laughs> so I really want to go to that and mm -hmm. see what that's, that's all great. about. And uh, sound immersion, mm -hmm. there's a woman that does some work with crystal bowls, and that sounds really interesting, too. So there's just such a rich variety mm -hmm. of different things that women can, you know, stick their toe in and see if they're interested mm -hmm. in that, and it all makes just a beautiful kind of patchwork quilt of right. services. So, so while people go to the support group in dealing with difficult issues, there is an, another outlet, the, the creative outlet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also the, uh, you know, all, all of our senses. Mm -hmm. I hear sound, I hear laughter, I hear, you know, visual stuff. It's, mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And, and they vary over the years because it kind of depends on who the volunteers are who come forth to mm -hmm. offer this. At one time we had guided imagery mm -hmm. um, and she's moved on and something else took that place. So there's always enough to fill the whole month. So yeah. how would, if somebody has something to offer as, as a healing circle? They would call Women Care and our 
program director Laverne would talk with them mm -hmm. and this goes for any kind of volunteer whether it's someone who wants to offer something like that or um, work at the front desk or be a driver uh, they simply call women care and express their interest in volunteering and they'll have an interview and um, see where we can fit them in Perfect. and this leads to our um, free services if you're ready to talk about that go ahead yes uh, the other thing we always tell women about when they first come to us is that we have a free services uh, binder in our library and there are probably at least a dozen massage therapists of various types and a couple of acupuncturists, mm -hmm. some people who do facials and a few other um, nutritional, consultants. nutritional consultants, someone else who does sound and massage. Mm -hmm. And they each have a page in this binder where they say how many times they'll see a woman care client for free. And our clients can simply go through that and take down phone numbers and check them out. It's called, it's the binder. The binder, People yes. People go to the binder for their yeah. goodies. So, so what does the future hold for women care? And how can the community help? Because obviously there's a lot of free things going on. But what's the future hold? What do you see happening with, with women care? You know, I think the main thing, I'm quoting Laverne now, our, our kind of our program director, is, you know, women care's doors are open mm -hmm. as long as there's a need. And unfortunately, in Santa Cruz and in the world, mm -hmm. there's an ongoing need to support people who are diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. It's not something that anyone wants to come into their life. I always say it's the worst club in the world, but you know we welcome new people into the club mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Women Care has just been there solid, consistent now for over 20 years. And the most important thing about Women Care, I think, is the warm and welcoming presence mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And I think hopefully that's coming through in, in this interview. But Women Care just, doors are open mm -hmm. if you need us. And you know, we're always looking to um, find new ways that we may support our clients. Uh, one of the things that we could use if it ever were to come about is a larger space. Uh, we have a meeting room where all of our clients meet for these um, support groups, and it's fairly small. There were probably 18 or 19 women at the complimentary treatment last Saturday, and they were out the door. It was so full. They were sitting in the hallway. So if, we, if anyone in the community ever became aware of a space that involved enough parking and meeting space for us, that's a, a need that we'd really like to Wonderful. see filled. And we also... Um, could really use more volunteers that come from Watsonville and are Spanish speaking. Uh, we do our best. We do serve quite a few Spanish speaking women and our drivers just do the best they can with it. But we have very few that are Spanish speaking right That's now. That's right, yeah. Now, um, we said several times, the services are for free. Free. And obviously money has to come from somewhere. <laughs> I heard there's, there's three people paid for, we have to pay for mm -hmm. the, um, the room, the, the building that we're in. So how does the money come? Well, the most of it comes from private donations, just individual mm -hmm. donations. Mm -hmm. And then we have a few different fundraisers in the community throughout the year, but the big one is our Strike Out Against Cancer. Well, our that's bowling. a great segue to the video yeah. that um, Ann Simonton and Rebecca Leakley did. And so why don't we take a look at the uh, Women Care Strike Out Against Cancer. Okay, bowling. and it's coming right up. Yes. getting dressed up and costuming and bowling and raising money and I think Women Care is such an important organization especially because it's small it's local um, and it really helped me when I was first diagnosed gosh 17 years ago now with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma <laughs> scariest thing ever and uh, they connected me with somebody else who had been um, who had had the same experience and uh, really helped me calm me you know all of that um, both she and I are still alive <laughs> So yay. yay, yeah, that many years later. My mom 
is a breast cancer survivor herself, so I witnessed firsthand, you know, what a struggle it is, any kind of cancer really, but I mean, it's, it was pretty life-changing just going through that, so um, I think it's important to have groups that are, you know, resource groups for people struggling with breast cancer, any kind of cancer, um, and it's important to have support for the people suffering, be it the people that are that have cancer themselves or the people, their families or their friends or anybody that loves them, you know, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. Put a team together. I mean, all you have to do is raise a little bit of money and it happens very, very easily, especially now since they have the um, donate here button and um, PayPal, you can just boom, you know, do it. So you don't even have to write out a check anymore. But if you can get a team of five people together, or even if you want to bowl by yourself, you can get um, hooked up through Women Care. They'll put you on a team, meet new people. It's really fun. It's such a blast. We have so much fun and look forward to this every year. <laughs> Well, that does look like a lot it of fun. It is fun. And, you know, just watching that video again reminded me that one of the things that I think both the clients and the volunteers really get about Women Care is what a big family we are. Uh, we have volunteers that have been there for years and years mm -hmm. and aren't leaving soon. And we have clients that come and go, come back when they've had a recurrence. Um, or come back to volunteer? Or, and come back to volunteering. I it, served on the board of directors for uh -huh. a while, then I had another recurrence. Well, that's another mm -hmm. way I understand <laughs> yeah. that people can help is become part of the, the friend circle. There's a, um, what's it called, the um, Friends, of, friend, Friends of Women Care? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that has to do with fundraising. And, and general guidance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect, yeah. Any, any final thoughts on your part? Anything we didn't mention that you would like to say? The main thing I wanted to say is how warm and, and sweet Women Care is mm -hmm. for, for all of us, but also it's such a local, it's the epitome of a grassroots organization. Mm -hmm. All the money that comes into Women Care is spent on Women Care clients. Mm -hmm. We don't have any you know, overhead or anything, so it's, it's such a direct service organization with a really big heart. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you, Sharon, and thank you, Corey, for being here and telling us all about women care. Really enjoyed talking to you and, and sharing with the folks at home that Nonprofit Spotlight was about women care, and women care has a big part in our community, and we, uh, we ho really hope that you'll support women care and go and bowl on October 26th, the last Saturday in October. So anyway, see you next time.